Hey there everyone, AJ back again for the Mighty Gloostick channel. Time for our weekly demon series video. Today, the Nalfeshni, the judges of the abyss, self-proclaimed directors of the process of destroying the universe. The 5th edition monster manual says they are twice the height of a man. Well, that would have to be a pretty huge man because they tower 20 feet tall. Their corpulent yet powerful frame weighs easily in excess of 8,000 pounds. They have cloven hoofed feet. They almost always walk upright, though their legs are shorter than their massive arms. They look like a nightmarish cross between breeding of an ape and a warthog. Their upper back sprouts a pair of feathery wings, like a mockery of an angel. They are an abyssal manifestation of the evil, intelligent, sadistic brute. They are the bloated and vile pig who dines on misery and enjoys the hatred of those they dominate. They are the oppressors who greedily murder and eat innocence while driving the whole sick and destructive machinery of a morally bankrupt system. They are the corruption of power and the pleasure of others' misfortune. They are the arrogance and merciless motivations of those who think they deserve to abuse everyone else because they are in charge. Those who would go out of their way to kill and eat the last of an animal of its species. Those who would prefer to eat something still alive and in agony because they think it improves the flavour. The Nalfeshni is one of the most powerful types of demon. In 1st edition Advanced Dungeons and Dragons, Nalfeshnis were known as Type 5 demons. From the 2nd edition AD&D, the name Type 5 demon was revised to Nalfeshni, taking the name of the greatest individual of their rank as the name of the entire breed. For those patrons who are reading the script as I talk, you'll notice that I'm, I don't use Roman numerals, and honestly, I don't know any way, any, why anyone still does. They have been around since Eldritch Wizardry was published in 1976 and have been in the game ever since. Now Feshnis are enormous demons that judge new souls arriving in the abyss. This creature blends the appearance of an ape and boy, as I said, and there are three mentions of the names of specific Type 5 demons in early D&D literature. They are Bilwer, Jehud, and Nalfeshni. Delfeshni is the most powerful of those named, and it's, that's where the name of this whole class of demon comes from. But it's important to note the Type Fives don't call themselves Nalfeshnis, nor do they consider themselves a race or a species of any kind. They are all fairly different. While they have a similar build and features, powers and methods, plus they answer the same call when other demons are able to summon them to their side, other than that, they're quite independent and don't congregate in large numbers, on purpose really, unless it's for a specific reason. Other known Nalfeshnis are Jandor, who is living in Sigil's market ward, and Judge Gabberslug, also living in Sigil, uh, Malastroy, Ulstra, Tafion, Uzwart, Tyranny the Merciless, who is uh, what the Iron Flask artifact is named after, uh, which is Tyranny the Merciless's Iron Flask, Vrax the Skullbiter, Thekrex, Quixic, Zerivamil, Yurganthor, Ragglath, Maleve, who's minus a hand which got bitten off by a Velociraptor in Tether, believe it or not, um, that's from Dungeon Magazine, uh, Draliths, Lakshishirek, and Zukothoth. I love Zukothoth, that's a great name. Nalfeshnis are almost always found in command of lesser demons, rather than on their own. They plan and coordinate, and they adapt on the fly, literally, uh, accurately assessing an enemy's strengths and weaknesses. They choose targets for itself and minions accordingly. It person personally refrains from uh, combat, it kind of disdains personal combat, in favour of sending minions in to do that sort of thing. But... Their drive is to destroy, they are demons, and death is only an inconvenience for them most of the time, as they will have secreted reserves of demonic power stored away for later restoration of their full abilities if they're ever wiped out and reduced to a lesser state. They can go back and sup on that and restore themselves to full power. Um, they're covetous and greedy, so they make sure that they have an insurance policy against their own destruction. The Nalfeshni's most distinctive feature is its horror nimbus, an ability that requires a recharge and is usable on average uh, one turn out of every three if you're rolling well. Like a dragon's frightful presence, this is one of those features that uh, um, once a creature is hit by it, um, it then but is not affected again by it for 24 hours. 
It's most useful against whichever opponent the Nalfeshni is engaged in melee with at that moment. They're very tactical um, and energy efficient fighters who will concentrate on taking down one opponent at a time. Retreating into the air if they need to, typically they'll teleport 120 feet into the air and hover there, howling orders to its minions and recuperating from its wounds via some demonic magical means. Um, and if anybody can understand their orders because they speak abyssal, they'll quickly cue onto that because they're very observant and they'll just issue their orders telepathically instead. Because it is a f um, its flying ability, the Nalfeshni will generally fight from the air, flying down towards an opponent, and it looks very incongruous with these reasonably tiny wings um, carrying around this massive corpulent bulk. Using its multi-attack option, uh, then flying back up again, with an armor class of 18 and on average 184 hit points, it takes a lot of arrows to bring it down, and it's resistant to most magical attacks, so it's fairly safe in the air. Between its magical resistance and teleport features, the Nalfeshni is good at taking out spellcasters, who are giving its minions trouble and possibly threatening the Nalfeshni itself. From their elevated vantage point, they will be able to coordinate, coordinate their minions to strike from different flanks, uh, cut off retreat points, advance from positions of cover, form defensive lines so other minions behind them can move around, order minions to charge in and shove player characters apart, then pile in more minions to keep them separated. They know from experience that player characters often need to touch each other or be in close proximity to heal and boost each other. So they'll do their best to shut that advantage down. If they've got enough space, they'll try and keep characters over 30 feet apart. They are also smart enough to use poison attacks such as a scroll with a spell cloud kill on it or a magical ring that can cast poison spray, for instance, and they'll do that as a flyby attack from the air. Now, Fishney hate they hate being summoned by anything less powerful than themselves, particularly mortal magic users on the prime material plane. They are foul-tempered when anything takes them away from their creature comforts, and their favourite entertainment, I should point out, is sitting at a banquet feasting table, splattered with layers of filthy gore as they tear limbs from shrieking mortals who are nailed to serving plates of hot iron. They rumble with gurgling laughter at any display of extreme violence or cruelty, like uh, an even more corrupt and degra degraded version of Jabba the Hutt. They would certainly have a pleasure palace that is an absolute nightmare for any, any mortal who visits it. The desires and drives of demons are absolutely revolting and brutal. They would consider the worst parts of the Saw movies to be relatively amusing, but would critique the lack of proper psychological abuse of the victims, loudly proclaiming that uh, they've got much more sadistic way to tear apart a mortal's mind and spirit before they actually kill them. And of course, seeing mortals torn to bits, roasted alive or forced to mutilate themselves would just cause them to salivate in hunger because that's what they consider to be a nice appetizer to a meal. Now, consider that you have one of these things in a summoning circle. It has arrived from the abyss, which is quite, it was quite busy with its own sordid affairs, and it experienced a foul and wrenching agony as a very personal tractor beam locked onto it, then transported their existence to some dull little backwater mud ball in the prime material plane, the place it most wants to not exist anymore. It is dumbfounded for a split second as glaring beams of divine energy pulse upward from ancient glyphs etched in simple pure materials. The calling cards um, of entities the demon is all too familiar with from ancient long, long ago times, but no doubt this ignorant mortal's snack in front of it barely knows anything about it. In fact, it probably just copied those names and seals of authority from some book and doesn't even know what they mean. It is infuriating. It's like a baby just figured out how to plug in a laser confinement, confinement grid and switch on the power, but has no idea how it works or why, because it can't even see the lasers. Then, of course, the thing dares to speak, and the Nalfeshni has to actually converse with this feeble little runt just to figure out how it's going to get out of this confinement circle and tear this whole world apart. Or it would, just for the insult of it all, being summoned by a Twinkie, um, if it didn't have to, much more important things to do. Back in the Abyss, since it has many rivals, and even its underlings will absolutely be taking full advantage of its sudden absence, ruining its plans, stealing all its stuff, and preparing a welcoming home party that would be decidedly unpleasant. So they're very, very keen to get back home again. They hate being summoned. Given a mere few seconds of opportunity, seconds, 
they will never hesitate to tear the magic user and any other mortal within reach to blood squirting chunks. They would prefer to drag them back to the abyss and thoroughly ruin them, mind, body and soul, but yeah, they feel every second of their servitude as years of hard fought achievements and dominance are being stolen from them back in the abyss. So uh, too eager, all too eager to return to mess, um, to look after that mess. And they don't want to stay in the material realm very long at all. Oh, just out of interest, the main difference between a Vrock, which I will be covering, and a Nalfeshni murdering your character is that the Nalfeshni prefers to do so much more slowly, and it uses cutlery. Just a reminder, if you've not subscribed already, feel free to do so. Be sure to hit that like button and notification bell as I upload from the other side of the world sometime in your future. For access to all the scripts and one week advance access to these videos, consider becoming a patron of the channel on Patreon and they also get to request specific videos from me at a pro, uh, as a priority for a minimum of just $1 per month. Join the community on our Discord server, come say hi. Also, if you want to pick up a new video game at a significant daily discount and help me out in the process, check out the daily deal on Chrono down below. Also, I've got a mug which you can buy if you need to drink some coffee or whatever beverage of your choice while you're watching my videos. As always, Thanks for listening. I'll be back with more for you very soon.